Hi, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. So as promised, today it's going to be the day of your presentation regarding the unusual news that you have been assigned for last week. So while doing so, as an audience, I think it will be appropriate for you when you are listening to your friends, you're going to share with us one thing that you found interesting uh, from your friend's news. Okay. So without uh, wasting any more of our time, I would like to uh, welcome all of you. And then uh, please be aware that I'm here with uh, at the school. So in case you missed your school, here I am now. So uh, please, we are going to see each other in uh, at least approximately one and a half weeks time. Okay, so before doing that, we are going to maximize our PDPR as much as we can so that when we pick up in our uh, lesson after we, you come back, uh, we can do it in a more structured man manner okay all right so as for the first group can i have hi mukarabin hi dj hi all right so whenever you're ready you may share your screen and then we can start the presentation now For my uh, Haiti will uh, okay. present the right. okay. Thank you for uh, letting me know. Okay, that will be your presentation for a bit whenever you're ready. Okay, okay. For my group, uh, mm -hmm. to write a story about a 10 year old child that has been compared to Shakespeare. morning as you all knew there is a 10 years old girl which is viral for her intelligence in making poems she was also being compared to william shakespeare who is known for making good poems it is a 10 years old girl been selected in an international poems competition and of course the people were shocked another shocking thing is the girl is the winner beat so many countries it was an eye-opener for a whole, whole world. Next slide. I think you can move to the next slide, Hayati. Um, I think the slide is not moving. Um, do you have some, any copy in your hand, uh, Mukarabin? Before because the slide is not moving. Do you have any uh, copy in your hands? Uh, yes, teacher. All right. I think we can go with that. Uh, I will continue the story. Okay. Uh, the, the judges claim that Sarah's poem is unique because it gives such a sorrowful stories behind it. The judges mm -hmm. also claim that the poem has the same level as Shakespeare. And Sarah admitted that she got her idea from her own story of life. She is living in a poor family and she used to help her disabled mother sell chips in their store. Right now, because of she is getting viral everywhere, many people try to help her. Okay, that's all from this that's all from my group. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. That is quite interesting story about a girl that's been compared to Shakespeare and basically her ability to her ability to um her ability to uh to give uh, crafty ideas about his uh, her writing would be uh really 
you know, uh, befitting to be compared to Shakespeare. All right. Thank you, Mukarabin. All right. So uh, we are done with uh, a girl with being compared as Shakespeare. Now, uh, can we have... Hi, Jalisha. Hi, teacher. All right. So uh, Afifa will share your screen whenever you're ready, Jalisha. Assalamualaikum and good morning. Welcome to News Line. It is 8 a.m. October 26, 2021. This is Jilisha reporting about the discovery of a vulnerable paint called the Battle of San Jacinto by Henry Arthur McElder. The paint is about Texas War for Independence from Mexico. It is said that the Texas militia under Sam Houston launched a surprise attack against the forces of Mexican General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana at the Battle of San Jacinto near present day Houston, Texas. It was painted in 1895. The work was later lent to the state of Texas along with down the at the Alamo and other large scale painting where it was hung in the Senate Chamber of Texas State Capitol. The two paintings still hang in the Capitol to this day along with four other McAdams originals. Records reportedly show that the McAdams had painted a smaller version of the painting in 1901, which some say was commissioned by Texas art patron J.T. Deshield. However, McAdams is said to have kept the work for himself after Deshield paid to pay the painting's full price. The story gets a little easier from there, but it's believed that the painting was later passed down to family members who settled in West Virginia, hometown of McAdams' second wife. I suffered Lacey Dennington. Meanwhile, some experts thought the work had been destroyed in a half fire. In 2010, McAdams' descendant, John Boone, discovered the dirty painting in his grandmother's attic, hidden between the rafters and the night of child. She claimed that the painting, which had been in the attic since 1950s, was worthless. Knowing his mattress was sitting on historic gold, Boo received permission to contact a Texas auction house. The small version of San, the small battle of San Jacinto painting was found to be in good condition, albeit with a few small punches. It ended up selling for $234,000 to a Texas buyer. This is Jelisha from AAM News signing off. Thank you. Guys, it's a good work. Uh, Jelisha, you managed to uh, deliver the news exactly like a newscaster should be. All right, thank you for your presentation, Jalisha. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, let's hear from um, Anis. Hi, Anis. Hi, teacher. All right, so I'm, I was told that you are going to be using Afika screen, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, um, we are still waiting for Africa to share. Here we are. Okay. Whenever you are ready. Uh, okay. uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today I'm going to present for my group members uh, about a couple who celebrate uh, their yeah, yeah, okay. Anniversary. Yeah, 90, uh, 90 wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay, December 2015 in America, a lovely couple celebrate their 90 anniversary there. An Indian origin couple in the UK, Karam Chan and Katari Chan, uh, respected as their marriage lasted over 90 years for from 1925 until Karam's day in 2016. Karam and Katari Chan were both born in Punjab, India and were allegedly married on 2 December 1925. 
if their claim dates of birth are true, this will have made them 20 and 13 years old at the time respectively. Their marriage was an arranged one and was a sea ceremony. The couple had eight children. After that, the chance may migrate to the UK in 1965, where they settled to work in Erfurt, West Berkshire, England. Karam, who had worked as a farmer in India, got a job working in Erfurt's Woodland Mills. As of 2015, the chance had 27 grandchildren and 23 great grandchildren. Uh, next slide. Okay. okay. After that, uh, yeah. Uh, ah. Okay. During this event, our reporters have collected some information about their secrets in maintaining their marriage for nearly a century. They said that they always and think about causes that may occur to their children if something that happens. They also had a chance to get to know about their tips to keep healthy although they have reached over 90 years old. They answer together that we always exercise together in the morning every day as well as cut down on sugary food and beverages. It was very happening and a sea of people came to their events to capture their beautiful moments. This event also got worldwide coverage as people from other countries also don't want to miss out the, on these memorable events. Karam Chan died at his home in Erfurt, England on 27 September 2016. At the claim age of 110 years, 322 days, his marriage to Carter therefore lasted for an alleged 90 years, 291 days. Katari Chan died on 28 December 2019 at the age of 107 years, 57 days. That is the last... Ah, that, that is, the, in the, is the last chapter in time but the first chapter in eternity. May the couple souls rest in peace. That's all for me. Okay, that is such a heartwarming story about a couple who stays together till the very end. Thank you, Anis. Uh, right, let's move on to Hadif. Hi, Hadif. Hi, Disha. All right, whenever you're ready, you may share your screen and then we can start presenting. Okay. All right. All right. Assalamualaikum and very every good very good morning everyone. So for today, my group will present a dentist that people actually enjoy visiting. It is known that a doctor named Johnny, which is thirty eight years old, has been serving himself as a dentist. For about 12 years, he is married with three children. His dental clinic is located at Shah Alam, near one of the fam most famous restaurants in Malaysia, Ratatouille, and about 25 minutes from Kuala Lumpur. It is thought that he likes to be called Bro Johnny and not as a doctor. Usually, people who are sick or having problems with their teeth will go to his clinic for treatment. It is reported that he treats people that have a problem with teeth or gums and he also offers a dental checkup for everyone for free. It is expected that people always come back for his treatment as he always treats his patients like a family. Bro Johnny is friendly and funny. Whenever the kids were scared of being checked, 
he will make some jokes or entertain them so that they will become comfortable. He is also a generous man and he has said that it's not about money but it is all about happiness. Bro Johnny is also friendly with all the people and really being too serious whenever his patient visiting him, including his nurses or assistant. It is expected that people are satisfied with his treatment and never get any complaint from the customers as the charges are reasonable. It is said that he is going to continue working as a dentist until 60 years old. If any of his children are interested to carry on his legacy, he will visit his clinic frequently to be support and help dealing with patients. Alright, that's all. I'm Hadith reporting from home. Oh, awesome. Alright, thank you Hadith. Alright, um, let's hear from Afika now. Alright, wait a minute, yes, it's here. Sure. Assalamualaikum and very good morning. You are watching on you are watching news on Four by TV and I am Nurul Afika. Today news is about a person who says by animal. Mr. Stegel, a 57-year-old officer from Belfast United Kingdom, walked home from work on 25th October. Upon arrival, he opened the door and went straight to his bedroom. Out of the blue, his pet, which is a rabbit, came to his wife behaving uncommonly, but she just ignored it. His wife, Mistress Segal, noticed that he acted strangely, was squatting with his still face when he walked as if his leg was shaking. It is told by her that it was just a normal matter. At night, they watched the tally together, but then he complained to his wife about the headache that he was expressing and she just told him to be patient as it would pass. While Stegel's wife was distracted, suddenly the rabbit jumped on his head in his chest and began tapping intensely until she realized what was taking place. She called the ambulance right away and it's confirmed that Mr. Stegel suffered from diabetes. Because of that, he was saved from a coma. It was such a miracle that Jal Little Bunny has saved her husband's life. It's worth paying attention whenever your pet acts in a strange way because sometimes they are more aware of certain things. That's all for today. Thank you. Right. This is also a nice example of newscasting. Very good, Afika. I'm super proud of you. All right. Okay. So, um, as you can see there, that was uh, those are the examples of using passive reporting verbs. And we normally use that to uh, make things sound as if it's a fact when in actual when in actual fact it is actually an opinion okay so just a little bit of revision i'm going to share with you the video that you have probably watched to help you with this task so that we can refresh our memory on what passive reporting verbs are okay let me just share my screen first Nest Cafe Gold, cafe style indulgence, anytime, anywhere. Good afternoon. This is Dan for BBC Learning English. Our top story this week passive reporting structures. Our correspondent Dan has more. Thank you, Dan. Yes, the situation here on the ground is changing fast. I have just 90 seconds to bring you up to speed. Starting now. So, what do we know so far? It is known that there is a passive reporting structure. This structure is made using it, plus a passive reporting verb, plus that, plus a clause, which is part of a sentence. This structure is used to report information in a formal style or to report facts, even when the information is less than factual. Consider these. I know that the sky is blue. This 
is just my opinion, but it is known that the sky is blue. This is a widely recognized fact. The passive verb structure is most commonly used in the present form, while the verb which follows the that clause can be in any tense. Consider these three examples. It is hoped that he will be okay. It is known that the criminal escaped. It is thought that chocolate is delicious. The structure hides the source of the information. This is because A, it is obvious. B, the source is unimportant or is people in general. And C, the source is unknown. There are a number of common verbs which are used with this structure, including believed, thought, estimated, assumed, expected, known, and said. Dan, I'm out of time. Back to you in the studio. <clears throat> Thank you, Dan. It is hoped that you found this useful. For more information and a full transcript of everything that was said, please log on to bbclearningenglish.com. This is Dan for BBC Learning English, signing off. All right, so that was a very quick and concise way of uh, explaining what passive reporting verbs are. Okay, so meaning to say when we use passive reporting verbs, it's either the source is unknown or is it the people in general? Or one more thing is mainly because it is widely accepted. Okay, or perhaps you just want to influence people on uh, receiving your opinion, hence you use passive reporting structures. Right, so for your exit ticket for today, I'm sorry to end the class early because I have class at nine and I need to prepare for that as well. Okay, so... Uh, we are going to write an exit ticket in the comment section once this broadcast has ended. Okay, let me just show you this. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, so for, for your exit ticket, okay, to end this broadcast, so after this broadcast has ended, uh, please, uh, I need you to write a weird news headline. Just a headline. I, I'm not expecting you to write a full news. Okay, write a news headline in the title of the news using passive reporting verbs. Okay, the structure that has been uh, revised just now. We can use that to help you to write a weird news headline in the comment section. Right, please have your comments ready by 9.30 and then uh, that's how I will record your attendance for this class. Till then, thank you everyone.